that doesn't encompass one ideal, it encompasses many different ideals. And at the end of the day, you can say, well, what is leadership? Well, it's one person leading a crowd, right? Oh, kind of. But in a real situation, it is many different aspects that we can't solidly nail down. I think that's been reiterated previously. It's an organization, despite the fact that if you know many leaders, they're probably the most unorganized people on the face of the planet. And I know that because I'm one of them. Um, very unorganized, but they have to have an organization in order to set up to get what they want to do, to get where they want to go. They're all visionaries. They all rely on risk management reduction. That's one of the key points they're doing. Oh, this is, oh, thank you. So when I mean risk management, when you have a problem and you need the big decision, it's generally the person at the top that's going to make that call. They're going to be the ones to say, this decision that I'm going to make is going to do the company wonders or could potentially send us down a path that we can't recover from. They provide inspiration. Some of them, hopefully most of them, provide a base of inspiration for the people that work with them, work for them, to enlighten them, to push them along, to ensure that they are going to get the best out of that company, that organization. So we've got many different types of leaders. Some of them are religious, some of them are business-wise, and that's one I'm going to focus on more. Some of them are government, some of them are military, and some of them are royalty. Did you ever notice that each one of these people in this, in this particular slide here was pointing? Did you notice that? Do you know what they're pointing at? I have no idea. <laughs> if you could tell me, that'd be super. But no. They are making a point. Each one of them does make a point in their own right. They each have different roles involved in what they do. If you are a religious leader, such as the Dalai Lama himself, you're going to want to push your vision. You're going to want to tell people, this is a way that we can live our lives. If you're government, if you are a prime minister out there, you're going to say, well, this is the way that we should lead this country. This is what we should be doing as a nation. So each one of them have their individual roles. Now, where we want to vary on this is with creativity. Each one of these have structured roles, and each one of them are traditional in basis. Some of them more so, such as royalty itself. It doesn't truly, in, in the sense of Canada, have a definitive role other than to provide us some cultural perspective. Creativity allows us to step outside the box of tradition and provide different aspects on what we're doing. Provide different ways on doing things. You gotta be careful though, because you step so far out of the box, people won't understand you anymore. So you gotta be a little careful on how far you do that. Maybe in your head, you are so far out of that box, you're off stage. But in other people's minds, you've gotta keep a consistent message when you're providing leadership. In the case of my company that I was involved with here, Kyoto Fuels Corporation, we've produced a 66 million liter biodiesel plant right here in Lethbridge, Alberta. It is the largest one in Canada. And what we are doing there is we're taking waste materials and other agricultural products and making diesel fuel. And in that, we are reducing greenhouse gases, and we're a big leader in that aspect. We reduce greenhouse gases by 191,000 metric tons a year. That's the equivalent of 35,000 cars taken off the road per year. And if I, you know, Look at back at what I can take some pride in, that's probably where I can take some pride in. But people would think, well, why did you do this? I mean, you're the only one out here in Western Canada that's got one of these things. What drove you to take the leadership role and help do this? And when I say the leadership role, it's actually several small group of us that would take that leadership role, not one person, it never is. And I would give credit to every one of those involved in this project. So why did we do it? We saw some opportunity, no doubt, we're business people. But second to that, we recognized the need to change. We recognized that we had to do something different than what we were doing right now. We noticed that, A, our oil reserves are in decline in North America. That doesn't mean we're going to run out of oil anytime soon. We've got many reserves of, of fossil fuels. The difference is we're starting to run out of cheap ways to get that material out of the ground. Pure evidence of that is what we do in northern Alberta. Whether you agree with it or not, it's part of the necessity of, of our fiscal health. But it's a difficult way to grab that oil out of, the, out of the ground by comparison to the drilling that we used to do. It's more expensive. It's harder to do. So we are running out of conventional methodologies of extracting oil. That's why your oil's above $100 a barrel right now, when several years ago it was 20. We also saw that there were climate change issues that were occurring. We saw that there was a need to start doing this. So we felt that we could do two things here. We could look to have a unique business opportunity, as well as provide ourselves something that was creative and returned back to the environment as opposed to just back to our bottom line. 
So I was lucky enough to end up with a, a group of people that could coordinate this role together with me. But we had to figure out, okay, what are we going to need in order to do this? Well, if you're going to be a leader, you need several different things. And there's no one way to do this. Keep that in mind if you want to be an entrepreneur. There's no ever one way to do it. You've got to figure out who's going to be involved in that project. What do you want to accomplish? What do you really want to do? Do you want to make staples? Do you want to make new cat litter? Do you want to make biodiesel? What do you want to do? What are your resources at hand? Do you have an infinite amount of money? It's ah, kind of funny. No one ever does, of course. You always have a finite amount of resources and you have to dedicate those to which you are running. If you are, have a dedicated number of people, if you have a dedicated number of, of dollars, if you have a dedicated number of land, whatever that may be. In our specific instances, we knew that we needed to attract resources and that's one of the things we accomplished. That body is a plant out there is over $30 million in value. We had to track that money. What are the roles to consider? Again, in tradition. And this is where we break into the creativity aspect. Can we get away with all traditional roles or can we be flexible? Can we move to roles that have some flexibility in them and provide different aspects in that leadership? And we certainly were able to do that. And one of the reasons why we had to do that is because we're a small group. There's not very many of us. So sometimes the president and the CEO was cleaning the toilets. Sometimes he was taking out the garbage. Those traditional roles disappeared of that big ivory tower and the big boss man. That doesn't exist because it can't. How do you measure your success when you start doing this? I, I love graphs. You can pretty much graph everything. You know, you could graph like, did I feed the cat and how much am I going to sleep tonight? Or <laughs> as it goes down. This particular graph I really like because what it measures out is the success of a leadership based on two things. Based on one, your productivity, and everyone thinks it's always just that. No, it certainly isn't. Without a team, without the people that are doing that creativity, you have nothing. So in this case, it measures also against the concern for people. On the side of going north, on the upward swing, you've got just concern for people. And you've got nothing else as far as productivity worries. So you've got the typical office environment where everyone's gathered around the cooler and no one's really talking about work. Well, that's probably bad because then your productivity is probably zero. And if you feel yourself going downhill and you think it's easy, that might mean that you are really going downhill. The other side of it is strictly produce or perish. So there you are, military style, and the big boss man saying, Bob, where's that report? Susan, how many times did I tell you HR goes under BS? That kind of thing, that's the big boss. I've got a colleague that has a really good analogy to this. She says that it's like the eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. It's this big evil red eye from a tower that beams down at, at the populace within an organization and provides like this ultimate sense of, of loathing from that perspective when only it's about the producing. We don't care about the people themselves. You can almost hear it in the background. <coughs> From the background of this, this big evil eye standing around. You feel like Frodo looking for a rock to hide under. <laughs> These don't work. Of course, in the long run, when you're talking about an entrepreneurial situation, there's not enough people, and you need to make things tight. At the end of the day, you're after the 9.9, you're after the team style. You want to make sure that you're providing for your people, and you're also providing for your productivity. So, how is this relating back to, again, the creativity side of that? Well, from our perspective, and, and there's many different angles this can go, the one I've, I've focused on is how technology is changing these things. For example, I'm holding one piece of that. This is probably an old style um, iPhone. I think I've got the next generation thereof. I don't know how many people have an iPad. Well, I've got a few hands out there. Somebody even lifted his iPad up. So technology is really changing not just the aspect of the workforce, but what that, what that workforce is looking like, especially in nations such as Canada. Knowledge is power. Information is power. I'll leave that rest of that quote out there for you, but it's by a very interesting uh, woman by the name of Robin Morgan. And what it points out is this new technology is allowing access to people for information. And they have more ability to access information, more ability to get that information than ever before. In the old traditional roles, of course, a lot of that information was seconded amongst the ivory tower, and it is no longer so. So now you have an empowerment of the workforce. They have a much stronger voice now. They have the ability to do things they never have before. I'm going to ask a really, really hopefully dumb question. Who has an email account in the room? Okay, I think everyone raised their hand. I think I saw one guy in the back had both his hands up. 
Certainly, we all have email. That's one of the ways that we communicate. Information is not liquid. It flows very, very quickly. We can get information, not just facts, but we can also communicate very quickly, like we never have before. Who has a Twitter account? More than half. That's amazing. I don't. I feel like a dinosaur again that I got to pick up with the times. Who's looked up something on Google? Okay, everybody. So you know, for example, if we look back to the leaders, um, we can get our information right away about our leadership, about what we're doing. Um, you can look up how much the Prime Minister of Canada makes. You can look it up. You can look up how to make a nuclear bomb. Just a little quote in here, I did not in tech ask you to go look up and come make a nuclear bomb. Okay, I didn't do that. I'm just as a reference suggesting that you could do that. It's all there, all the information is there. And this empowerment to the workers is then providing them a greater ability from a leadership perspective to be involved, to be deeper involved, to be greater involved. I'm not even asked the question of Facebook because I don't have an account there either. So does this change leadership? It certainly does. It brings out aspects of leadership that are gonna change. The leader itself, herself, has to change and reflect on this new information age that we have. They have to ensure that these people that we're involved with are empowered to provide better service to the organization, but in the same sense, we have to be very careful that we're also providing entitlement as well. How many people think we live in an entitled society? Over half of you raised your hands, and I won't tell you what the age demographic was of that entitlement basis, but I will tell you something interesting from my perspective. Many of the people that um, move into this modern age have never really faced a true, true uh, crisis, such as those people that I know have zero entitlement in them that faced the World War II. Right now, when you have these people coming in, they expect their Cheerios in the morning, they expect their milk in the morning, they expect to have their internet access, and if they don't get their internet access, they get downright angry. The same thing can happen in a business. You're gonna give these people more power, more ability, more liquidity to work with you. You also have to be very conscious about what that means and what that could spell out. So it may lead to abuse and it may lead to, well, if I don't have that anymore, then I'm gonna get angry. So you have to be careful. But I think at the end of the day, it means that the big boss man and that attitude, this perception of the one leader, the one guy who stands on the whole level is disappearing. And it's becoming more and more of a team atmosphere because it is. So, if you'd like to take some of my perspective, if you lead out there, there's a couple things. We're always gonna need leadership, that, that one position is never gonna disappear, or that roles are never gonna disappear, but um, you should look to organize and, and aid that structure for these people to help you, and the more the better. And you need to adapt the fact that this world is changing as quickly as it is, and it is very quick. I mean, another anecdote here is, I have an iPad as well, and all of my family uses the iPad, and it, everyone struggles to do, even, I'm not kidding, the cat. There's an app for it. Can you believe that? There's an app to entertain a cat. So you turn it on, you put it on the ground, and of course it's a little laser light, and there's the cat going cross-eyed, chasing the laser light. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So it, it's so liquid, and it's moving so fast, and changing so quickly, that even the cats are entertained anymore. You don't need to buy little squishing toys, you just get an app for it. Wow. So again, look to involve your employees, empower them. Together you're stronger, as opposed to apart. Uh, and uh, it's going to bring a better and closer team if you provide that service to them as well as to you. So I'll leave you with this quote. Uh, it's by Henry Ford. Coming together is a beginning. Staying together is progress and working together is success. Thank you very much.